In this video, we are going to be looking at cross joins, and we are also going to be looking at how these differ with some of the operations that are available. Uh, so keep in mind, some of the, what we're going to be discussing uh, are not available in some languages. Uh, in the case of cross joins, they're more supported than, let's say, cross applies. So we're going to look uh, briefly at, of course, our two tables that we've been using uh, in these examples. And we have table one and table two. And you can pause the video and see how these line up, basically three and four, when it comes to IDs match, everything else does not match. So when we're using cross joins, if we select, uh, and we're using IDs here, T1 ID and T2 ID from table one, and we cross join table two, note that there are no conditions. I'll get into that in a second. What we'll see is that for each record, or for each ID, I should say, in table one, we get the ID in table two. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, and we get ID three, four times. Uh, we get ID four, four times, five, four times, and so on and so forth. And we would get up to six, of course, it goes off screen. So cross join is multiplying the product, if you would, of this table, like each record, each ID in this table gets each of these, right? So one gets four threes, two gets um, I said that wrong. One gets four threes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. One gets each of those records. Two gets each of those records. Three gets each of those records. And four gets each of those records. I'm thinking backwards. Another way of looking at that is uh, each of the records in table two uh, get one of those in table one. Okay. Well, if we do cross apply, it's the same result, right? So we take that same query and we switch cross join to cross apply and we get the same result. So it would seem that cross apply is the exact same as cross join, even though that's not the case. And we'll see some examples of how these differ. So if we remember in our cross apply example where we were using uh, the self table, so in our self table we had these uh, five records, ID one, two, three, four, and we had val uh, these different vowels. We would get the same output if I do cross join. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, cross join here. So if I selected a T1 ID, T2 ID from self table, and then cross apply a self table T2, the cross join would be the same. However, if we were to take the next step, and now we're doing cross apply and we're doing cross join. We'll see when we do this cross apply here, what we're doing with our self table is we really want to compare these values eventually. So what we want to do is we want to look at where this value here, T1 ID, equals the next value in table two. So we see this is what we're doing here. We're cross applying, but we're actually doing a filter here where we're filtering on this filter here. We're saying for every value in table one, get the next value in table two, right? Because we want to compare these vowels here. And what we see goes on here is that we are able to achieve that with this where T1 ID equals T2 ID minus one, as you see. And you can watch the cross apply video and we go into more detail on that. However, if we try to do that with cross join, it doesn't work. It fails because it's not able to do this filter. It is limited in its condition. And that's one of the things I highly suggest you experiment with when you apply conditions, if you go back to here on your cross join. What you're gonna find is that there are similarities, a lot of similarities actually between cross applies and inner joins in terms of conditioning and filtering, but these are not the case in cross join, okay? And so that gets us to, I'm gonna come back to this slide in a second. So. To look, think about the differences, and we're talking about SQL Server in this case, though we could be thinking about other SQL languages. First of all, cross return, uh, cross join, I'm sorry, returns the cross product of the two tables, as we saw with table one and table two. It's useful in non filtered, non strict join situations, but be careful because a huge result follows. This is also available in other SQL languages outside of T-SQL like Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Spark SQL, et cetera. Okay, now notice that there's no condition required, so be careful where do you use this, right? So when you cross join two tables, we're gonna have that multiplied product, right? of those two tables. That's very useful. Again, in the report, let's think about where we want, we have 12 months, we have January through December, and every single month, we want to compare the results of every month to every other month, including each month to itself. So we want to even compare January to January, February to February, but we also want to compare January to February, March, April, May, and so on and so forth, right? Cross join is actually very useful. Um, but it's not useful if we don't want that blown out, right? If we want to put some conditions, which gets us to cross apply. This returns the cross product as we saw with table one and table two, like cross join. It can also be conditioned, conditional with filters and strict joins. And it also can be applied to a table valued function, which we'll get into in a second, where we pass in a parameter to the table valued function. And I point out, as we saw in this example that I'm about to cover. Now, this is not available in many other SQL platforms. 
forms like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Spark SQL, etc. Uh, it is available in a later edition of Oracle. Um, so in this case, we're also looking at cross-join versus cross-apply, and this is where we're applying it to that table valued function here. And this table here, um, this uh, DM exec SQL text requires us to pass in, as we see, this SQL handle. It requires that in order for us to get output. Well, when we do cross-join, again, here we are uh, trying to do this, this filter here with this basically kind of almost like an inner join type where we're trying to pass in something into this function and it fails. Why? Because it's not able to do this, right? This is not the functionality cross-join supports. Whereas cross-apply does, we're able to actually pass in the SQL handle so that we actually get the session ID and the query text uh, that's the result of this when we pass it in. By the way, there are other columns available from this function, but in order to access this function, we have to actually pass something into it, right? And cross-apply is very useful here, whereas cross-join, as we see, fails. So they do seem similar, and if you're simply looking at the product, if we're simply looking at um, this and this, it is correct that they look like they're the same in terms of functionality, but when we start to use them and when we start to apply conditions such as here, or when we start to use them in let's say table valued functions, we start to see that their functionality is very different. And likewise, cross join is supported in many SQL languages. However, for instance, if you're using MySQL or PostgreSQL, you're gonna find that this is not available.